in-text citation is a key skill to being a strong student and scholar. This is what really distinguishes truly academic work from more informal work. What we've been working on throughout the year is important. It's useful for you to be able to know how to reference titles and author names in the text of your writing. But when you're really trying to push into that next level, using your in-text citations are the most formal way to do that. There are several styles that students will learn depending upon what field or school they're at. At New Oxford Middle School, we teach a modified version of the MLA system. The exact rules you follow are less important so long as you're starting to learn some of the basic principles and formatting of how most in-text citations go. We remember that we call them in-text citations to distinguish them from a works cited page. That's your full reference page that comes at the end of your document that contains the entire citation. An in-text citation is a very focused version that goes within the bodies of your writing. In these examples, it's coming at the end of the sentences where we are pulling statistics from this example source. An in-text citation contains three major pieces. Some of that might vary depending on what is available, but in essence, they most often use the author last name, the publication year, and the page number if there is one to the document that you are using. And so in this example, number one is kind of the default format. I write a sentence in which I'm using a quotation, a statistic from my original source, and then I give credit by creating what we call an in-text citation or sometimes a parenthetical citation. The basic version has your author last name, comma, publication year. In this case, perhaps there is no page number. Pay careful attention that there is a space between the end of the sentence and the first parentheses, and there is no period there. And that's true whether you have a quotation mark or not. Then you have your parentheses, author last name with a capital letter and no space in between, comma, space, the year, no space, parentheses, and then a period with no space before it. You can be very creative in the way that you're formatting these. You can include the author's name within your sentence, and you can put the publication year immediately afterwards, even if it's in the middle of the sentence, or you could use the author's name in the middle and put the publication date at the end in the parenthetical. What's important is the formatting and that both pieces are present somewhere. To practice this, we're looking at a few different example statements. You can see in this one, we're looking at a mistake made by a student. So they used their sentence here where they introduced an idea, they referenced the article title, and then they put in the actual quotation. For their parenthetical citation at the end, their mistake was that they used the publisher, Gale, when they should have used the author's last name, and they used the publication date when they should have used the, um, or they used the access date when they should have used the publication date. Pause the video, think for a few moments how you would fix each of these citations. Here's how I would have fixed them. In our first example, we need a period after the parenthetical. Be careful that you're not putting it in between, but instead at the very end. In this statement, they improperly formatted the title. When you're using an article title, that goes in quotation marks. When you're using the title of a database or a book or a complete source, there's no quote marks, so we scratch those off and we underline it instead. In this one, they improperly use the author's name. You use the full name the first time you reference them, and then you use the last name only afterwards. We never use only the first name. They also had too many dates. You do not put it after the title. It either goes after the author's name or at the end of the sentence. And since we already had it at the end of the sentence, we can just delete it there. In the final example, they had bad formatting. 
your spaces should not be after the parentheses or before the final. You flush those straight against. Here's a more challenging set of examples. You'll use the printing press mini DBQ handout from your paper to find the correct source and find the information that you need to create the in-text citation at the end. For example, in number six, we would look to see that this is coming from the first document, an award-winning historian, and this quote. But you can't just generally reference the historians. You need this in-text citation to provide the precise information your audience would need in order to locate the source in your work cited and then look it up further if they needed to. And so you can see how I would format the piece by Jared Diamond. You'll go through and do this for the other examples. Pause the video and think about how you would add the citations to the end of each of these, referencing your mini DBQ paper if you have it so that you can find author names and years. Here's how it should be marked. Since it's referencing this title, we know that that's coming from the piece by Now Ferguson, and so we put his last name and year in the parentheses at the end with a period afterwards. The Rand Corporation was written by James Dewar, so we use this citation. Number nine was a little tricky because there is no author name with that article title. Sometimes sources don't reference a specific author. In those instances, you often would use the publisher or the article title, depending upon which specific system. In this case, I'm using the article title, which would then be in my work cited. Here, we already had the author name, so all we need to add is the year at the end to create a full citation. We could have also put it immediately after Murphy's last name. When you're working on your printing press essays, you will need to use citations such as these in your writings.